This is a video of Usain Bolt stumbling, almost falling on his face, and then still winning the race. Bolt stumbles, regains his footing, and now he's trailing. He has some work to do. DeGrasse, meantime, pressing for the lead. Bolt looking over his shoulder, and he gets there. The problem is, we are not Usain Bolt, and we cannot afford to make these mistakes in our performance, especially if you compete in team sports, which requires you to sprint short distances and has very little room for error. A powerful start can set you up for success and a crappy start can set you up for failure, embarrassment, or even worse, get you disqualified. I'm gonna go over some of the worst mistakes that we can make, real examples of how it looks like and what the science says. One mistake is failing to develop our power. Let me give you an example. Athlete A is strong, but not very fast because they haven't done enough sprinting to transfer their strength into speed. Athlete B is not very strong, but once they get going, they can get to a very high top speed because they have a lot of bounce, possibly because their muscles are very effective at stretching and contracting fast. Think of jumping on a trampoline. It's hard to get high on the first jump unless you have a lot of leg power. This is athlete A. On the other hand, it's very easy to jump high after a few bounces, especially if you have a really bouncy trampoline. This is athlete B. When I speak to younger athletes, typically lack of strength is the problem, simply because they haven't spent enough time doing heavy strength training just yet. In younger athletes, it's more obvious, but in more developed athletes, it might be harder to figure out whether they need to get stronger or transfer their strength into speed. In that case, we can use a force velocity profile. If you're working with experienced athletes, you probably already know what that is. I have a video on it if you'd like an overview on how to implement it. Another mistake is taking short and quick steps. It's counterintuitive, but short and quick steps are actually the opposite of what we want. We don't actually get anywhere. Research shows that during the early acceleration phase, the foot spends more time on the ground because to accelerate, we need to put more force into the ground but if we pick up our foot early, we limit our ability to do so, which we can see if we look at guys like Marcel Jacobs, first few steps are long and the time spent on the ground is greater than during top speed. One way we can easily identify this mistake is by looking at the arms. If we look at the athlete I showed you earlier, you can see that the rear arm does not fully extend back. This means they're cutting their stride short, meaning rather than getting a full push, they're picking up their foot a bit too early and as a result they are not getting the maximum power possible from that first push. So in a case like this we have an athlete who already lacks power to begin with and then due to a flaw in their technique isn't making the best use of the limited power they do have. Based on these two mistakes alone we have a huge opportunity to make significant improvements by increasing their power and then making sure they use it effectively. Quick side note, recently I hosted an open date where you could book a call to speak with me. It was fully booked out almost immediately. And after six hours of phone calls, I spoke to everyone from dads with seven year olds to 57 year olds, all super serious about the results. It was such a positive experience that I decided from now on, I'll be having a link in the description of my videos where you can now book a free consultation. The next mistake I wanna talk about is focusing on the symptoms and not the root problems. I could show you my entire checklist of things that I look at when I'm analyzing the start. However, those are typically symptoms of deeper issues. If we want to make lasting significant change, we need to address the root causes of those flaws in our technique. Focusing on the errors in our technique while ignoring the deeper issues that are causing them is like taking cough medicine for a cold. It can stop your coughing temporarily, but the virus is still in your body. And making this mistake can actually make it hard to develop our power like I described earlier. For example, lacking a proper foot strike can be a symptom of lacking the proper strength necessary to drive the foot back powerfully. Or it could be a symptom of lacking the ability to produce forces fast enough to achieve the correct angles. So rather than doing countless exercises, we can laser focus on the key areas that will make the biggest improvement. Because unlike elite athletes, most of us just don't have unlimited amounts of time to train, especially if you're a coach who works with athletes in a school setting. Based on my prior experience speaking with athletes and looking at the science, this is a huge problem that is often overlooked, especially with highly driven individuals who are the same people that are gravitating towards sprint training. Let's look at this logically. If we're building a house with a crappy design, will spending more time on construction create a nicer house? Obviously not. If you want a better result, we need a better plan. In our case, training more does not guarantee more results. 
if anything, trying to do more in less time will actually increase the chance of something going wrong. In building a house, this could mean a flaw in the construction. In training, this could mean an injury. Instead of training more, we need to start talking about how we can train the minimum amount necessary to get the maximum results possible. Most people are not talking about this. And if we look at the science, it can take three days for the body to recover from an intense training session, which further highlights that we need to focus on quality and doing more is not always the answer. These are some mistakes which can kill our speed. It applies not only to track, but athletes of any sport that requires sprinting. If you learned anything new, hit the like button for me. And if you found this useful, then I'd make sure to check out this video next, which goes over five mistakes that I was making previously when I began teaching myself how to sprint. I use real examples, some of which are almost embarrassing, and I go over what I did to fix them. You can click here right now to watch that video next.